Well, hello, Professor Zimbo. What are you going to tell us about today? I'd like to talk to you about my new book called Calendar Anomalies in Arbitrage. I've been working on anomalies for about 30 years, and this is the combination of this. Uh, I use them for uh, stock market, uh, futures trading, sports betting, horse racing of, of the sort. Now, an anomalies are regularities. They're prices, pattern movements that seem to be predictable. And in the stock market, it's usually three things. Cash flows, institutional practices, and investor behavior. Now, in the arbitrages, we have two types of arbitrage. We have regular arbitrage, which is pure arbitrage, which is to buy A and to sell A at the same time, but at different prices. So you, you, you can't possibly lose. Risk arbitrage is more common, and there you, you buy A, and then you try to find a B that you sell, which is similar, and you may or may not find it, or it may be later. So, for example, in some cases, you have to um, double up the first one and then redo it, etc. Okay. Now, very often in, in, in the stock market and NFL football and other things of that sort, you have mean reversion of prices, and that allows you to put the other side on. Now, in the book, there's basically two major parts. One is a new chapter by Constantine uh, Zurbach uh, and I on the U.S. futures markets. Uh, that's with the S&P 500 and the Russell 2000, actual trading that, that he's done and I've done and research presented. Most of the data is, ends at the end of 2011. Um, there's minor changes in the script sometimes with volatility. Basically, the anomalies are sort of there, uh, and they, they sort of work, but if there's, there's excess volatility, they may, they may fail, etc. Small cap effects are the strongest, so that's in the Russell 2000 rather than the S&P 500. Um, I discussed various approaches to the study of financial markets uh, in, in the book, uh, which is um, uh, different approaches that people take. And our approach looks at extensive data and reasons for the regularities, including the cash flows, institutional practices, and behavioral biases. Now, some of the areas that we look into are January effect for small cap stocks and uh, trading in futures markets. I've been doing the January uh, effect uh, trading for uh, many, many years, starting in 1982-83 uh, as well. There's also the January barometer. Uh, January gives a signal for the rest of the year, so we study that. If, if January is up the rest of the year, is up most of the time, but if January is negative, it's uh, up only about 50% of the time. Now, there are other effects like sell in May and go away, uh, which is discussed in the literature, but, but sometimes a little bit vague. Uh, basically, the way we look at sell in May is we, begin, we look at the beginning of May until the turn of the month of October. Uh, going into November. So November is the, the best turn of the month of the year and, and we do. So So the idea is to be out of the market in the weaker part of the year. It was extremely useful in 2011 uh, and we'll see how it turns out here in 2012. There's also political effects that we study and turn of the month and some odd effects and real trading results. Now. The rest of the book has classic articles that I did over the years. Many are, are not easy to find, and uh, they do different things. There's the original paper of Clark and Zimba on turn of the year effect in the futures. Uh, I have arbitrage across racetrack betting pools, and in high lie, a January barometer around the world. Risk arbitrage in the Japanese Nikkei put Warren market. Uh, I worked with Ed Thorpe on this and Julian Shaw, and Ed won the over one million risk adjusted contest by Barron's based on uh, our paper on this. Uh, there's a chapter on design of anomaly funds, 
There's a look at land and stock prices in Japan. There looks at Japanese anomalies, turn of the month effects in, in different places in the world, uh, factor models that, that I did at Yamishi in 1988-89 and was used by uh, Buchanan Partners uh, London Hedge Fund, the bond stock earnings yield model to uh, look at crashes and give long-term advice about being in and out of markets, and efficiency of racetrack betting markets, and last, behavioral biases in option markets leading to overpriced and underpriced options, which I use in various personal trading, some client accounts, and, and in a hedge fund. The book is actually uh, hardback and paperback. This is the paperback version, and I've negotiated with uh, World Scientific a, a low price, uh, so you'll see that there's a low price for it. If you prefer the hardback, uh, you can certainly get that as well. Uh, thank you. I hope you enjoy the book.